بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على سیدنا و نبینا حبیب الہ رب العالمین ابل قاسم المصطفی محمد و علیہ التیبین الطاہرین المعصومین المظلومین و لعنت الدائم على آدائه مجمعین من الان الى قیام یوم الدین اما بعد السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ و برکاتہ and welcome to question time In this program, uh, we tend to answer questions uh, which are sent to us by email or even uh, by telephone calls uh, or if the program is live and they call us as well, we take questions and answer them. The topic that we have started discussing is the Islamic family law and it is quite important that we and our communities uh, become aware of uh, the family law so that this will avoid any sort of abuse of any sort of uh, uh, oppression uh, from uh, our own families unfortunately uh, you know uh, under the name of Islam and uh, furthermore uh, it kind of helps us understand that all these uh, critics that are on the family law that it is one-sided uh, is also clearly understood that it's not the case. It is a law that is based on the justice of God which will be, uh, which will provide utmost amount of uh, just decision uh, to the individuals, to the people who follow this law. If you may recall last uh, discussions were on divorce, the different types of divorce and the rights of divorce and how one could really divorce uh, you know, uh, you know uh, the reasons that, that are there for divorce, for example, uh, which we clearly mentioned that, uh, the rulings of divorce and uh, on what basis uh, that one could really divorce uh, a wife or vice versa. Uh, we discussed that in detail. Uh, and then obviously after the divorce, the Quran clearly points out to the waiting period. You know, for there is... A, a waiting period which is clearly mentioned in the Quran uh, that it says that uh, it is the idda uh, of a non-pregnant widow is four lunar months and ten days uh, in uh, in the chapter number two verse number 234 which clearly points out to which is the uh, you know thalathat al qur as they say you know the three periods that are finished and then after that so uh, you know, uh, these are for the non-pregnant woman. Obviously, if the divorce is taken place uh, when a lady is pregnant, uh, and then after the child is born, after the three months of period is finished, and then apparently uh, that is uh, considered to be according to uh, some of the fiqh that we tend to look at the different uh, fiqh schools of thought as well. Now. One thing that takes place after the divorce is the distribution of, uh, of wealth. Uh, what is the share of a woman? Or prior to that, I think we could look into the custody of, a ch of children. It's a very important issue. Uh, I remember giving a presentation uh, on, or a few courses uh, a couple of months ago uh, on this very topic. It is quite fascinating and a very important topic. Uh, the custody of children, who has the custody of children. Now, it has often been, uh, which is known as hedana in Arabic, which is often being misunderstood with the wilaya. You know, there is a thing called which is wilaya, which is the guardianship, and there is hedana, which is the custodianship. The custodianship is different to guardianship. Father is the guardian of the children, period. He will be guardian essentially. Well, a father could be a guardian, could be a valley, but he could not be, you know, a custodian. The possibility is there. He could be a guardian but not custodian. Or he could be guardian and custodian as well at the same time. So there are certain rules and regulations and conditions in which you know the law of custodianship the 
custody of a child is really uh, discussed. There is divorce has nothing to do with child custody, nothing to do with it. You know, it's automatically transferred. It's one of those things that, you know, when a person gets married, the right of divorce automatically transfer or comes to man. It's with the male. It is natural, right? It's well known. So the same way in regards to the custody of children, there's nothing to do with divorce. There's no condition that one says that, okay, unless the custody of the children is decided, we cannot have a divorce. It doesn't say anyway. It's not the case because usually people tend to uh, prolong or delay or, or uh, you know, uh, uh, use this uh, reason by saying that, no, I'm not going to divorce you unless the decision or the fate of the children is well known. The custody belongs to who? The custody of children is very clear. You know, it's, it is naturally, you know, is transferred depending on the, you know, conditions of, of the children and who will be the, you know, uh, caretaker of it. Okay, let me tell you this. The, when it comes to the custody of the child, the most important and valuable thing in regards to the custody of the children is the benefit and the betterment, the health and safety of the child. If the health and safety, if the, you know, security of the child is no good with the father, then he cannot be the custody of, you know, custodian of, he cannot have the custody of children. He cannot be, you know, for example, no matter in what age that child is. And the same applies for, for the mother as well. It's not the case that it will always belongs to the mother. You know, if that, if the custody of the child is detrimental, the custodian is detrimental to the child, it doesn't, you know, she cannot become the custodian of, of, of the child, right? So we have to keep in mind that children, um, are uh, the health and safety of the children is important, which is very, 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 very similar to the Western law. You know, in a, in a, in a court, when you go, where the divorce is why the, the child is young, there is a custody of the child. The custody of the child is not given on the basis unless that the custody is is beneficial, is in favor of the child. If it is not, then the custodianship is not given. But when it comes to the Islamic family law, we have two things. One is the custody and the other is vilaya, which is guardianship. These are two different things, so do not mix these two different things. Now, let's look at it. The custody belongs to who? Like as we said that we tend to look into different schools of thought as well just to have an understanding where there is a difference. The Hanafis maintain that, the Hanafi schools of thought maintain that the right of custody need to be transferred from a mother. It should pass to the mother's mother. So naturally the custody of a child is with the mother. If the mother is not able to take, now we are not discussing the age of the child, okay? So don't confuse yourself. Yes, that is a valid question which we'll, which we'll discuss later on. First thing, naturally, the, you know, the custody of a, of a child, you know, is, belongs to the must mother, right? It belongs to the mother. And now if the mother and why it is it is belongs to the mother because hidana comes from the word called hidden hidden means lap the child is on the lap of the mother so hidana comes from that hidden which is lap the child is on the lap of the mother mother is the caretaker of that child that is the seat of the child right so when a mother is have that sort of uh, you know uh, caretaking sort of custody of a child. Now, obviously, if the mother passes away, you know, may Allah protect all and everyone's mother, what will happen? Or if the mother, for example, rejects, if the mother is not capable of, if the mother have mental issues, if the mother 
if the child custody is detrimental if it remains with the mother for example right Hanafis maintain that that if the mother is unable to have the custody it passes to the mother's mother failing that to the father's mother first it passes to the mother's mother then it passes to the father's mother then it passes to the mother's full sister so if the mother's mother is not there then it will goes to the father if the father's mother is not there then it goes to the sister of the mother so it begins with that the custody of a child is first with the mother if mother is not there then it goes to the mother's mother if the mother's mother is not there it goes to the father of the mother if he is not there as well then it comes to the sister you know a full sister of the mother then mother's eternal sister then father's sister then full sister's daughter and so on until it reaches to the maternal and paternal aunts so after fulfilling the criteria after you know checking the whole mother side eventually it, if nobody is there and is detrimental then it goes to the father side to the paternal side this is the hanafi school this is the hanafi school now the malikis maintain that the right of custody transfers from a mother to her mother as high as is possible so mother's 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 mother failing this route it goes to the child's full maternal aunt it doesn't goes to the father it goes to the maternal aunt then the child's eternal aunt the mother's maternal aunt so it is like that for the malikis for the shafi just we'll just do the first level right it goes from a mother to her mother as high as possible for the hana hambali it goes that the right of custody transfer from the mother to her mother same way but the imamans you know the jafari maintain that should the right of custody need to be transferred from a mother it should pass to the child's father there's a difference here in all of the ahle sunna we have seen that the custody of a child goes from a mother to the mother mother's mother but in ahl tashihi in the jafari school the custody of a child if the mother is not there it transfers to the father not to the mother's mother right it transfers to the custody of the child is transferred to the child's father and if the father subsequently dies or becomes insane the right of custody reverts back to the mother because she has a greater entitlement than everyone else including the child's paternal grandfather right so the mother because of some reason the custody is transferred as the custody is transferred back and something happens to her then the custody is transferred back to the father right uh -huh. it transfers for example for example it's very important when the divorce takes place the custody of the child belongs to the mother now this divorce wife right the, this divorce woman marries another man when he marry when she marries another man the child's custody is transferred to the father you see so here is the is that sort of twist there because see either a father or a mother are the only one who would care to the utmost in regards to the children yes no doubt emotionally speaking grandmother grandfather both paternal maternal both side are obviously they love their children you know and they even say that okay we kind of take care of them more than for example right 
Now here, here it says that as the custody reverts back to the mother because she has greater entitlement including the child. This is regardless of her having remarried. In the case of non, none, in, in, the, in the case of none of the parents being alive, you know, this is a very important issue here. Custodian rights are transferred to the child's paternal grandfather or in his absence. The executor appointed by father. In the absence of the latter, latter custody is transferred to the child's relative with regard of the rank of inheritance. Closer relatives have precedence over more. So how the inheritance is transferred? In that sense, uh, you know, it's been, it's been uh, uh, the custody of a child is transferred. So now, conclusion. The custodianship, right? The custodianship in the Jafari school is maintained that should the custody, should the right of custody need to be transferred from a mother, it should pass to the child's father. Okay. And if the father subsequently dies or becomes insane, the right of custody reverts to the mother because she has a greater entitlement than everyone else, including the child's paternal grandfather. This is regardless of her having remarried, right? If she gets remarried as well, it belongs to her. If the father is not alive, if the father is insane, if the father is detrimental for the custodianship, you see? Now, who can be a custodian? What are the qualification? It's not like, you know, anybody can be a custodian. You know, the question is that the one who is becoming the custodian must have certain qualification. As for the custodian, both the Imami school, the Jafari school and the Shafi'i school maintain that the non-Muslims have no right to the custody of a Muslim child. However, the other school do not consider Islam to be the requirement of the custodianship. So, a non-Muslim, for example, you know, a, a mother is non-Muslim. They got married, is a non-Muslim. Can she become the custodian of the child? No. According to the Islamic family law, in the school of Jafari and in the school of Shafi'i, no. Other schools of thought, they say that, yes, you can. So, like as we said earlier, that the Islamic family law, there's a lot of room and it's contextual. You know, we need, there's a, we need a research, investigation to really adapt, to really, you know, enhance by on the basis of the Quran, on the basis of the rivayat and the sunnah that we have, on the basis of ishtihad, right? Now, the qualification is that, number one, that the, it should be someone who is, you know, someone who is a Muslim. Number two, someone who is not ethically corrupt. She cannot be the custodian. If she is akhlaqi corrupt, if she is a rakas, as they say, dancer or, you know, those professions that they were there, prostitute, for example, cannot be a custodian of a child. A drug addict cannot be a custodian of a child. All of these things are maintained because that they do not want the child to suffer. If the child is brought up by a drug addict or for example she should not have contagious diseases. You know, If the custodian have this there is a possibility of this being transferred to the child which is detrimental to the child. So the custodianship 
is not given to her. Although she might have all the criterias. Okay, she might be a Muslim, but she might be a drug addict. She might be a, you know, non-Muslim, but not, for example, drug addict. Then what, for instance, you know, is a Muslim condition there. So all of these things are checked by the Qadi, by the lawyers. And then it is decided. Now, what is the age when the custodianship is terminated? When does it terminate it? What is the age? You know. Now, once again, we have difference of opinions here. The Hanafi maintains that the duration of custody for a boy is until he is seven years old. And for a girl, it is until she is nine years old. After that, the custodianship terminates. It's finished. She is no longer the custodian of the child. She doesn't have the responsibility to be a custodian. Hanbalis maintain that the duration of custody is seven years regardless of child's gender, male or female. It is seven years. These are the Hanabel. They tend to maintain this. The Jafaris were of the opinion or of the understanding that the custody for a boy was two years and a girl was seven years. So for two years the custodianship belongs to the mother and until for seven years it belongs to you know, the mother. However, contemporary, the present Jafaris, as we said there's a lot of investigation, there's a lot of room and research and ishtihad that go into this Islamic family law. The present Jafari school of thought maintains consider the age for termination of custody for both boys and girls to be seven years. For both. It's not two years, but it's for what? Seven years. Clearly by the time a girl is nine and a boy is 15, they are no longer minor and are well able to express their views, particularly in their choice of parent with whom they wish to live. So, till that time they must be under custodianship. After that age, you know, of 15 and 9, they are considered to be free to choose to who belongs. It is a very interesting one here, other schools of thought for example, uh, Maliki is considered that the period of custody for a boy extends to the birth up to the puberty and for the girl until she marries. You know, see, until she gets married, according to Maliki's, the custodianship belongs to the mother. Yes, Vilayat is with the father, but the custodianship. So, what is this saying? This saying that there's a lot of ishtihad and room and discussions in regards to the Islamic family law that one should be aware of, right? Now, very interesting, are there any fees involved in custody? Are there any fees? One really have to pay any fees? Well, the Imams maintained the Jafari that the payment must be made for breastfeeding and not for custody itself. Yes, the mother can claim and the father have to pay. Ayatollah Khui said that the mother is entitled to receive payment for her services unless she is prepared to undertake such work without payment or if someone else is prepared to undertake those duties free of charge. So she can claim custodianship payment, right? And if someone else says that they will take care, they will be the custodian without any money, then she is not allowed to be the custodian and it could be transferred to some other person.
Hanafi is differentiated between revocable and irrevocable divorce. In the former, if a mother is observing idda, payment for custody must be made by the child's father. However, for the latter, which is irrevocable divorce, you know, uh, for invalid marriages, if the mother is observing idda, she is entitled to receive maintenance from the child's father unless the child itself has property in their own right. That means that if the, the, the money of the custodianship could be charged from the inheritance or from the money that, uh, that belongs to the child. You know, if, if, if the child have inherited some money and he has some money, then the mother can later on claim that, you know, according to that. But in the imamans, as we said, that they uh, are not to be paid. But for the uh, breastfeeding, you know, she can really claim that. Now, traveling with a child in one's custody, mother have a custody or the father have the custody. Can they travel without informing the mother or the father? For example, you know, it's very important. Imam has mentioned that a divorce takes place. The divorced mother is not permitted to travel with a child in her custody to any far off place without the consent of child's father. Without the consent of the child's father, she cannot travel unless the father permits. Or they say that if the mother goes to the hometown to her own country, then it is allowed. But other places she cannot. By being a custodian, she cannot travel you know, with the child to far off places where she cannot be reached, for example. And as for the father, he is not permitted to travel with a child who is in the custody of its mother. Other than the mother's hometown. Yeah, this is what I was telling so the father is taking the child somewhere without the permission of the mother, she cannot. Although the father have vilayat, as we said, vilayat is different, guardianship. But the father cannot travel with his own children from the divorced wife to wherever he wants unless there is a permission from the divorced wife or unless he travels to the hometown of the divorced wife. That is a Jafari school maintains in regards to the traveling of the custody. Can one really surrender the custody and shape? The Imamis, Shafi and Hanbali schools consider custody a right that a female custodian may surrender if she so pleases. None may force her to shoulder the duties of the custodianship against her will. So if the custodian comes on her, it's up to her. You know, she could surrender that custodianship. Then obviously, as we said, it goes to the mother's mother. It goes to the father, for example. In the case of Jafari, for instance, it goes to the father if the mother surrenders it, right? Uh, and then obviously nobody there is the Hakim Asher who gets involved. Well, very interesting discussion. There's much to be discussed in the Islamic family law. So keep watching us. Keep sending us your questions in regards to the Islamic family uh, issues. Uh, you have the v email of us. You can address it to me particularly or you can address it to question time. And we could look into the Islamic uh, family law and questions in regards to this family law and today we discuss the topic of custodianship which comes about after a divorce takes place or after uh, you know there be uh, a death or insanity uh, in regards to the parents. Uh, thank you very much uh, and we hope to see you next week again. Uh, goodbye from Hidayat. Uh, and uh, we will uh, continue on this topic. Thank you. Goodbye.